CTV News, 18th of April 2023. The suit claims Canadian safety was jeopardized by Ontario securities regulators collaboration with Chinese state police. An entrepreneur from Canada claims he feels betrayed by his adopted nation after Ontario financial regulators are accused of endangering his safety by assisting Chinese authorities with a fraud investigation. The Ontario Securities Commission OSC, which signed an agreement to investigate Edward Ong with China's Ministry of Public Safety MPS, in 2017, is being sued by the 57-year-old Edward Gong for violating his charter rights by working with a known human rights abuser. The case, filed in Ontario Superior Court, alleges that the Commission used contaminated evidence and gave the MPS access to information about Gong and his business that was unabated, unregulated, and unlimited in scope and use. In his lawsuit, Gong claims that the OSC treated him as though he belonged to China instead of recognizing his rights as a citizen of Canada. Gong became wealthy by producing nutritional supplements in Toronto and distributing them to customers in China. Gong claims that during the height of his success, his business had over 600 employees and over $200 million in annual revenue. The statement of defense has not yet been submitted. Given that the court is hearing the matter, the OSC declares it will not comment. Improper Protection of Canadians from Chinese Spider In an interview with CTV News last month, Gong claimed that Canada failed to defend him. I thought Canada was a nation that could provide security and peace. That it might safeguard our liberties. I no longer believe it, Gong remarked through a translator in Mandarin. Two years after the tycoon's criminal fraud and money laundering charges were dropped, Gong's statement of claim was submitted in February. A $1 million punishment and approximately $15 million in assets were forfeited to the Canada Revenue Agency in 2021 after his company, Edward Enterprise International Group, admitted to running a pyramid scheme and fabricating paperwork. The former opera director turned mogul spent over 20 years in Canada and was granted citizenship in 2008. According to emails from CTV News, OSC once informed Chinese authorities that Gong might be present in their country. Gong claims in the lawsuit that the Ontario regulator put him in danger of becoming disappeared and exposed him to the potential of torture, death, and indefinite confinement. Zhou Letian, the attorney for Gong, claims that his client's case demonstrates that Chinese intervention goes beyond election tampering at a time when foreign interference is dominating the parliamentary debate. This illustrates how deeply ingrained and integrated, Chinese Communist Party, partnerships are within the Canadian system, according to Etienne. This is not about a few misbehaving MPs. Access is made possible by luck. Gong was viewed as a success story by many before the OSC probe. He also owned two hotels in Toronto and a Mandarin language television station with a Scarborough, Ontario, base, and his company selling health supplements. Due to his wealth, he was frequently invited to political events where he met top Canadian officials. He claims that representatives from the Chinese Consulate General in Toronto would come and speak with him about the cultural pageants he staged and the programming he put on. He can be seen in a widely shared photo seeing Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau preparing dumplings in 2016. Gong claims that since becoming a citizen, he has given a total of $10,000 to federal conservative and liberal candidates and that consular staff never told him to provide money to any particular candidates. Gong questions whether he might have unintentionally angered China on one of his television programs. I live my life by Canadian principles. I might have offended someone's feelings, Gong stated. His attorney thinks Gong was singled out for attack because he gave up his Chinese citizenship to become a Canadian and achieve success independent of the Chinese Communist Party. The CCP sees you as a rival when you grow to be very big and successful, and if you're not their partner, then you're the enemy, Etienne remarked. Being successful puts you in China's crosshairs. A request for comments on Gong's complaint was not met with a response from the Chinese consulate in Toronto. However, court records reveal that Gong first came to China's attention in October 2015, when 11 persons were detained in the province of Hunan for recruiting participants in a pyramid scheme. They were peddling bogus shares in a business called O24 International Pharmacy Federation of Canada Edwards Business Group, according to authorities in Shaoyang City. A warrant was then issued by China's Ministry of Public Safety MPS, for Gong's arrest and incarceration. Gong was made to give up more than $60 million in assets through a court case in New Zealand. 
To freeze assets and recover the money they felt was being laundered in China, Chinese police sent their dossier to the New Zealand Embassy in Beijing. Then, New Zealand authorities asked Canada for assistance monitoring Gong and learning more about his business. Affidavits claim that the Chinese government was in charge of examining the financial information gathered by regulators in all three nations. The testimony of the 11 men and women detained and found guilty in China formed the foundation of a sizable chunk of the case against Gong. The defense team for Gong hired an investigator to go to Hunan province and speak with some of the suspects who had been let out of custody. Some said they were coerced into confessing by police extortion and threats in transcripts given to CTV News. A woman claimed her friend's son was turned down for admission to university because they knew her, while a man said he was held for 37 days without being charged. In Gong's complaint against the OSC, almost 1,500 pages of documents, including this proof, were submitted. Junks and Money Laundering Emails and reports exchanged between OSC investigators in Toronto and RCMP liaison officers at the Canadian Embassy in Beijing are among the documents disclosed as part of the complaint. According to an email from October 2016, the Integrated Market Enforcement Team of the RCMP, which collaborates with the OSC, determined that there wasn't enough evidence to press criminal charges against Gong at the time. However, things appeared to shift after a meeting in Beijing with Yu Xiaowen, the Deputy Director General of the NPS's Fugitive Affairs Office. The RCMP liaison officer Sean Jorgensen met with Yu just before Christmas in 2016. According to Jorgensen's report, the Deputy Director General thought Canada, not New Zealand, received most of the 1 billion yuan from the pyramid scam. In a letter to the RCMP, Jorgensen stated, General, you noted that money laundering is a significant priority for the RCMP and proposed that Canada and China launch a joint investigation of this case. In February 2017, OSC investigators went to Hunan province to speak with witnesses detained there before a formal agreement was signed. According to Gong's lawsuit, OSC held its interviews in front of MPS officials and described the journey as a luxurious junket. Side Joint Agreement The OSC struck a deal to divulge and exchange information with Chinese police on April 4, 2017, according to court records. According to the agreement, any proof the commission offers will be applied to similar law enforcement and prosecution of Gong and other individuals under the criminal law of the People's Republic of China. China passed its national intelligence law in 2017, forcing Chinese organizations and persons, wherever they may be, to assist with official intelligence activity. Officer Jorgensen of the RCMP, who raised concerns about exchanging information with China, was allegedly expelled from the liaison office in Beijing despite his reservations, according to Gong. He turned down an interview request because the case is currently in court. As Director of Operations for the Parliamentary National Security and Intelligence Committee, Jorgensen is back in Ottawa. One of the bodies tasked with looking into Chinese political meddling in Canada is Nzakop. Beijing Observing In October 2017, General Yu and a group of Chinese operatives flew to Toronto after the cooperation agreement was inked. According to Gong's lawsuit, the OSC took no steps to restrict the MPS behavior while they were in Canada. On December 29, 2017, Gong was detained after arriving at Pearson International Airport. Search warrants were carried out, and Gong's property was raided two months later. The lawsuit asserts that OSC employees sought to walk Gong through the nearby Eaton Center for a photo op before delivering him to the courthouse at Toronto's Old City Hall rather than utilizing the designated entrance for prisoner delivery. Gong further asserts that OSC employees accessed and gave access to at least 5,890 possibly sensitive documents to Chinese and New Zealandian investigators. According to Etienne, the records contain sensitive information on Gong's Canadian employees and his clients in China. It is unknown how China handled these people. The businessman claims that the incident has made him fearful that Beijing is watching everything he does. Whatever I do, the Chinese government is aware of it. Information spreads quickly, and since I attract much attention, I must exercise extreme caution," said Gong. Operation Fox Hunts Shades Ina Mitchell is a Vancouver-based author investigating Chinese meddling with law enforcement. Mitchell claims that Operation Fox Hunt in China is evident in Gong's case, even though it is not mentioned in the court filings. 
The operation started in 2014 and targets Chinese public figures and business leaders charged with financial fraud and wrongdoing. The apprehension of these supposed fugitives who reside abroad is frequently broadcast on communist state television and pro-China media. Gong, Mitchell claims, would have been a high-level target for the Chinese Communist Party to leverage, as he had ties to Canadian officials as the owner of a television station. Since 2015, according to Public Safety Canada, Canada has imposed increasingly stringent criteria on this program. It is commonly thought that the Chinese government uses Operation Fox Hunt to quash regime opposition. The OSC cooperated with China and conducted an investigation into Gong with the help of the Mounties two years later, in defiance of the restrictions set by Public Safety Canada in 2015. Mitchell expresses her concern at the OSC's willingness to deliver Gong into danger. It would be prudent to inform him that Gong might be in China, wrote OSC senior litigation counsel Cameron Watson to you in an email conversation submitted to the court as part of Gong's lawsuit in May 2017. Gong eventually admitted that he had not left Canada. Still, the complaint claims that the OSC should be repudiated for disclosing information that might have made it easier for communist state police to kidnap Gong. It's dishonorable. He is not a permanent resident, he is Canadian. If a citizen isn't safe, what message are we conveying to Chinese Canadians? Says Mitchell. Assumptions of race Gong asserts it is doubtful that a Canadian citizen born in Canada of European and of white background, who was accused of financial crimes, would have been treated in such a manner. She also alleges discriminatory treatment. Etienne claims that Gong's lack of protection from his nation allowed a dictatorship to follow, observe, and interrogate him in Toronto. The RCMP declined to comment on the Gong issue specifically. Still, the Mounties emailed CTV News that foreign governments may try to intimidate or threaten Canadian communities or individuals. According to the RCMP, it doesn't participate in operations like Fox Hunt since they are considered illegal in Canada. Calvin Christie previously worked as an operations officer for the RCMP, looking into transnational crime cases. The security expert claims that the OSC's erroneous faith in China's judicial system has startled him. Christie says the Chinese government does not share our respect for values, due process, morals and ethics. He claims that during 2016 and 2017, law enforcement, the military, and politicians should have been aware of the severe risks associated with working with the Chinese government. Christie claims that the Gong case demonstrates that Canadian authorities have not done enough to inform the public of how China might impose control over its diaspora. Christie claims that Canada is weak because of our naivete. According to Christie, our failure to make sure Canadians are aware of the gravity of the situation poses an equal threat to China. Our proficiency in security intelligence is not at the same level. They were engaged in chess. Playing checkers is going on.